Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a first ride because your boy just got his 2022 Harley Davidson Sportster S. And it's time to break it in. Let's get it going. All right, guys, Chase on Two Wheels here. We are here at Mountain Motorsports in Roswell. Obviously, Mountain is not a Harley-Davidson dealer, but Harley-Davidson actually gave me this uh, 2022 Sportster S. If you guys aren't uh, super up-to-date on the channel, last year I got to go out to the press launch of this thing, and I've gotten to ride it around uh, the California hills, right? But I haven't got to do a first ride of it here on my home turf. So in today's video... I break in my new bike and we get to see how this thing does on my territory. Is it as good as I remember it to be? I really hope so because otherwise I'm going to be pretty upset. <laughs> but there's nothing to it guys. Let's take a look at this thing and let's see what it sounds like. Alright guys, that's what it looks like, that's what it sounds like. Now, we've got no ad for you this time, we're just going straight into this thing. If you guys would like to support us, there's a link down below to help support the shop and win the motorcycles we build, so by all means, click down there. But I ain't gonna make you guys wait any longer. It's in first. Wow, what an anticlimactic situation that was. Let's try that again. Yay! I don't know how hot it is where you guys are, but in Georgia, we are officially into the 90s and my body is not ready. But this uh, Reax Apex Pro Mesh Jacket, brand new to this thing. Check it out. It's got leather on the underarms and everything else is mesh. Bruh, I would be burning to a crisp today if I did not have this jacket. I've had it for a, uh, about a week now. And I gotta say, it is my absolute favorite summer jacket. Highly recommend it for you guys. We'll have a link in the description if you want to check it out if you're looking for a summer jacket. But, whoo, it's keeping me alive today, fam. All right, guys, 2022 Harley-Davidson Sportster S. If you guys haven't seen this thing in person, it is incredibly small. It's tiny. And look how bent my legs are. I'm 5'10", I got a 32-inch inseam. Super bent legs on this thing. We have modes. We're going to get into, what is it? We'll start with rain mode. Rain mode first and let's get her going. Uh, also, I will remind you guys, we have a motorcycle discord. And uh, if you're a fan of motorcycling, which I'm sure you are, you should go check it out. There's lots of motorcycle people in there. Go hang out, link's in the description. Woohoo! Oh, I have missed this. Ha <laughs> ha! All right, guys, we're on the 2022 Harley Davidson Sportster S. This is their new model with the Rev Max 1250 in it. It is in competition with other sporty cruisers. Uh, you know, other names in this segment. We're looking at the Indian Scout Bobber. We're looking at this uh, Ducati Diavel. Uh, the Ducati Diavel being a little more expensive, a little more powerful. The uh, Indian Scout Bobber. A little less expensive, a little less sporty. So that's kind of the class we're looking at. Now, it's a first ride. We get to do all of our normal stuff. So let's talk about body position right now. The seat is uh, relatively wide. I feel like I've, it's cupping and holding my butt pretty well. Seat does seem a little thin. 
And honestly, guys, I feel like I'm in a chair and I'm leaned forward and I'm holding these, uh, this handlebar. Uh, my legs are very straight and down. My arms are kind of straight out ahead of me. I wouldn't say I'm tacoed, but uh, you know, my legs are forward. My uh, forward half or my top half is kind of leaned forward just a little bit. I do like the slightly aggressive feel. Now, I do have to note when Harley gave us this bike, they have pre installed the uh, mid controls. So that's like a seven, eight hundred dollar upgrade. And uh, from my experience in California with this bike, the mid controls are where it's at. So I was super happy to see that they went ahead and installed those for us. Uh, I think stock, this bike comes with a uh, forward control. So actually shout out to Killer Creek. That is where we uh, picked this bike up. And uh, here in Atlanta, Georgia, Roswell, I think it's where we're at, but that place is awesome. That is the coolest Harley dealership I have ever gone into. So. If you're looking for a Harley dealership, I do recommend Killer Creek. All right, guys, uh, now let's talk about modes on this bike. Uh, we do have modes this time. The last couple bikes we've done didn't have modes, but uh, we do have modes. We have sport mode, we have road mode, we have rain mode, and then we have two custom modes that you can do whatever you want. Every one of those modes does exactly what you would think. It increases your power delivery. It uh, adjusts your traction control to match the mode. And uh, we're currently in rain mode, which, uh, it's not bad. It's muted down. Oh god a bump. I wasn't a fan of the suspension the last time I did that I wasn't too bad. I feel like the suspension's a little softer than the one I rode in California I wonder if that's uh Wonder if that's actually what's going down uh, But anyways guys, we're currently in rain mode and nobody likes to be in rain mode because it ain't raining fam We got a mode button right here on the uh, right handlebar. Oh, that was my back Okay, the suspension is the same as it was <coughs> I feel like it just got hit in the kidneys. All right, first modification we're making to this motorcycle is suspension, fam. All right, guys, we are officially in road mode. Since we're on the road, this should be the perfect mode for this territory. Uh, and guys, let's talk about balance. This bike does weigh something along the lines of 500, 509 pounds ready to ride so it's a bit heavy of a bike but i gotta be honest moving around traffic you know it is a it's got a small footprint it's got a lot of weight inside of that footprint so uh moving the bike around i have no problem like look at that i can just throw this thing around like a toy which is pretty interesting 500 pounds is nothing to scoff at that's a lot of weight and uh this thing's hiding it pretty well to be honest this body position i'm also really enjoying for this uh being in traffic because check this out get it in neutral come to a stop my legs can easily just go straight to the ground. I've been noticing that a lot more lately with motorcycles where how does the body position, the lower half of it, help or hurt you from getting your feet to the ground in city areas where you're going to be stuck in traffic? And uh, kind of love this position for that. It's one of the things I don't really like about uh, forward controls. I, I feel like I'm in a weird spot. Uh, but yeah, the balance feels fantastic. For so much weight, I think it helps to be kind of squatty and being low to the ground. Uh, I can manipulate the weight of the bike really easily. And that's with these chunky boy tires. So uh, that's impressive. I honestly don't know how they hit that much weight. The couple of times I've moved it around the shop, uh, it is very, uh, we'll call it cumbersome <laughs> to uh, move this thing under your um, under your human power you guys can see like even at really low speeds i've got no problem with just like keeping the bike up balanced i uh, i would not have expected that from such a squatty bike all right let's get out of this traffic and enjoy this thing Woo oh man i forgot what this thing can do for a second that's awesome so guys we're uh, up to speed a little bit and I can start feeling the length of this motorcycle in conjunction with those chunkier tires. The steering now that we're up at like 60 is getting a little uh, more stabilized. It takes a little more energy to get this thing moving around. Still incredibly easy to ride in road mode too, which is uh, really surprising. I'm, I remember this bike being extremely powerful and I'm wondering what sport mode is going to feel like because road mode gives me a really good amount of power delivery but I know this bike has way more in it but I also got to keep in mind we haven't broke this bike in yet so just if you all you guys were curious on all your all these first drive videos you're always like Chase you ride like an asshole on these bikes that aren't broken in yet I'm doing the same thing on my own bike so the universe is even now all right we are coming up to the uh, highway so let's get this thing into sport mode and let's see what it can do fam let's see what this thing can do because so far 
such an easy cruiser to ride even at the you know once it gets kind of cumbersome i don't even want to say cumbersome that's negative like i don't have an issue with how stabilized the bike feels at speed oh, now this i'm excited for now this i am excited for 40 to 80 pull here on the highway with our brand new sports duress Lexus, you are not going fast enough to handle what we're about to be dealing with. I feel like we're in a good gear. We're in second gear. I'm floating up at 4,000. All right, we're at 40-ish. It ain't gonna take us long to get to 80, fam. It is not gonna take us long at all. All right, on your mark, get set. God! Jesus, and there it is. <laughs> My goodness gracious, that's the bike I thought I had. That's the mother I thought. Woo, you put this thing in sport mode and it is a freaking sport bike on the highway. My God. <laughs> All right guys, uh, we're here on the highway with the sports to rest here. Let's put it in six gear. I won't, I won't be playing around as much. Now, as far as wind goes guys, uh, I told you earlier in the body position, I'm kind of leaned forward a little bit. The wind's not a problem at all. I'm kind of just leaning into it and the wind just kind of holds me up. I actually have less weight on my arms now. Uh, we obviously have no wind protection and I don't really, that this doesn't bother me at all. Maybe if I was gonna ride an entire day, like do a tour, uh, maybe I'd get like a little accessory windscreen or something like that, but honestly don't feel like i need it a little slow as far as the maneuverability here on the highway nothing that i would complain about but it does take a little bit of energy and time to get this thing going back and forth uh, while we're on the highway let's talk about cruise control it does have it so uh, it looks like we press that button yeah we engage cruise control and now set it turns green and now cruise control we're chilling i'm not a huge fan of cruise control here because the seat is so tiny and I'm one of those dumbasses that puts it on cruise control and doesn't hold the bars. But you got it if you need it. Push forward, it goes away. This engine literally rides like a super sport Japanese bike. It is incredible. We're in sixth gear and this engine has so much more to give. Wow, how incredible this amount of power is, man. So guys, that's the Sports Duress on the highway. Very stable, no wind protection, but a phenomenal showing for a a tiny little bike i felt super stable wasn't get blown around at all now we are coming up on the big turn and uh it's a it is a cruiser it's a sporty cruiser but it is a cruiser nonetheless let's see how she feels in our big long turn we're gonna do pegs we're gonna do pegs no pegs this fast and no pegs <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nissan, you ruined my fun today, but that's okay. Oh my goodness, man. What a sporty time you can have on this bike. I'm getting those feelings I got when I was in California riding this, where it's so, it's so much sportier than you would think, especially coming from someone who's ridden a couple cruisers, and I get the vibe. I get the cruiser vibe. You're not getting on these for sportiness, but you get on one of these and you start being like, I mean, am I though? Uh, so guys, while we're stuck in traffic, uh, let's jump over to the Cardo spot. Thank you, Cardo, for sponsoring the First Ride series. Uh, they are our favorite Bluetooth. So let's hear what the guys in the camera car have to say about uh, about the Sports Duress. It is a really well-built motorcycle. Uh, it handles well. It's got a good ride. Uh, it has smooth power delivery the, the engine is very sporty it revs very quickly probably my most favorite offering from harley davidson at the moment i have not had the chance to ride this like brian said the cool front wheel cool design it's a great looking bike it's another good offering from harley davidson so i'm excited to get on it and give it a give it a ride now look you did mention earlier today when we were standing next to this thing running that it sounds like a ducati it's it sounds like a bag of wrenches jumbling around in there a little bit for <laughs> Sure. All right, guys, thank you for supporting Cardo. And uh, Cardo, thank you for supporting us. If you guys are looking for a Bluetooth unit, we could not recommend them higher. I currently have their brand new Pack Talk Edge on this helmet. We love them. And you can get a discount with a link in the description. So check it out. Power delivery is so strong. And this is not a broken in bike. So the power is going to increase in sport mode. It is monstrous. It feels so powerful. It is just chugging you through space 
and I feel like the other modes are very good. I feel like road mode tapers off that power but still gives you enough to have a really good time with. And then rain mode, it takes a while to get the power wound up. I am very happy with the throttle delivery and the power for all of these modes. Now talking about transmission, I haven't had a problem with the transmission. I like the way the gearing is set up on this bike. I, I can't, it, it feels like it should. You know, I'm shifting up through the gears in a decent amount of time. I don't feel like any gear is too short or too tall. The one thing about the transmission I will note is uh, the lack of any sort of like, not any, but the lack of a real satisfactory like click when I shift through the gears. I, I don't get a lot of feedback from the shifter. And uh, if you guys have watched a couple of first rides, you guys know I kind of prefer, you know, I want the bike to, I want to feel a little hit when I'm shifting gears. And I'm just not getting a lot of feedback from uh, from the shift lever. As far as the brakes, uh, this is kind of a point of contention with the Sportster S because it's only got one rotor up front. Now, like I told you guys, this bike is brand new. We've only got a couple hundred miles on it. And uh, the brakes have not had time to bite in. But from what I've noticed, I feel like I would prefer to have a little stronger braking. Uh, I don't know if that would necessarily be solved with dual front discs but i would like to see a little stronger braking you know every time i've like hit on the brakes and i'll hit on the brakes up here in a minute i just don't come to a stop as fast as i want typically on a cruiser i wouldn't say anything you know it'd be like whatever the brakes are light it's fine but this bike makes me feel excited when i ride it fast but when i have a bike that makes me excited to go forward quickly i also need a bike that can stop me quickly right so i'll show you guys what i mean We'll come up close up here, and I'm going to hammer on the brakes. Doesn't look like anybody's behind me. Get a turn signal going, and then hammer on them. You see what I'm saying? I feel like I, I want to come to a stop a little faster. I can feel the ABS kicking on in the rear just there. I just, it's probably personally, uh, I would probably say the brakes are one of the as far as performance wise it's one of the low points of this motorcycle d d just don't get into a situation where you're going to get in trouble with that something to think about if i was to be honest i feel like the, the brakes might be the highest negative on this bike and that says a lot because this bike has so many good things going for it i love the ride of this thing i just want to i want to come to a stop a little sooner now Maybe when we do our six month review of this bike, uh, you guys watch that video and be keen on how the brakes have beat it in and felt once they've uh, give, been given some time. I would be interested to see how much stronger they feel. This is my move right here. I got my right leg down. I got my uh, left leg up on the peg and it's the perfect height to kind of lean over. Dude, I feel so cool riding this bike around. I ain't gonna lie to you guys. I ain't gonna try to act cool and not tell you guys that like I just feel like a badass riding this bike around part of that is this whole like cruiser era i'm going through but like part of it is just this dang bike though all right guys let's talk about the uh controls real quick now as far as all the controls go uh as you guys can see we've got quite a bit of them now i, d I now that we own this motorcycle i'm going to do some more in-depth stuff about using the music and all that kind of stuff for this first ride, I have not connected a phone to it, so we can't do any stuff like that. Uh, but all the controls feel really good. They have a good feel and a good press. They also have a really premium feel, especially for a bike that's only coming in at like 15, which is not cheap, but it's not one of these 20, $30,000 bikes. And it's got really good feeling controls. I do feel like the controls are a lot. Like you've got a lot of buttons on the left and a decent amount of buttons on the right. But I will say that they have given certain buttons, they, like they've given you certain buttons that are very important. Like we have a mode button. We don't have to go through the menus to find the mode. We just hit the mode button. We've got a home button that helps you get all the way out of the menu, which is very helpful. And I do like the dial setup. It's very easy. We all know, we've all played an N64. We know how to use this, right? Was that an aged joke? Has nobody played an N64? Where's my old gamers at in the comments? Uh, one of the things that surprises me the most about this bike, and I remember it from California. That's how big of a deal it is, because I actually remember it. I have always, like, I've ridden these uh, cruisers lately, and most of them have a pretty thick handlebar. 
the Sportster S has a thin handle, like a grip here, and it makes it so much easier to hold on and get a really good tight grip on the bike. I think it fits the bike so well. Uh, we'll hit on the mirrors real quick. If you get this bike revved up, as long as you're holding on to the mirrors, they vibrate a decent amount, but nothing too bad. If you get it revved up too high though, these things will get to the point where they're vibrating so much you can't really see uh, what's going on behind you. But as long as they're not vibrating too much, I think they're in a phenomenal position. I've been able to see everything behind me very easily. I've, I've actually been surprised at how good the mirrors have worked, so uh, props. Props to Harley for the mirrors. So uh, as you guys can tell, we do have a screen down here. I'm going to cycle through the menu just so you guys can see what it looks like. So you can do all types of stuff here. TFT dash, full color. It would take an entire video to go through the entire dash of this thing, which is very strange because the dash is just this little circle. But trust me, it holds a lot of information inside of it. And uh, you can customize what you want to be on the screen and stuff like that. I am noticing that the gas tank does seem a bit small i know when we filled this bike up before this first ride it told me like 108 miles for a full tank i don't know where it's getting those numbers but i feel like the gas tank might be a little tiny so i know y'all have got to look at the bike as we've been riding it around thanks to that camera car footage but i have not got to so we're gonna pull off up here i'm gonna get off the bike take a couple photos uh, and walk around the bike and show you guys some stuff that i really like about it and uh we'll see if i can get my old parking spot oh 144 holy christmas i am so happy about this jacket right now this is legit my favorite jacket that i've ridden in in probably a year or so i'm just so happy with this thing i feel so cool uh not like looks cool but like uh temperature cool on such a hot day like that's impressive man here's one of the negatives about this bike look how tiny that kickstand is i almost dropped this thing the other day because the kickstand fell up so here's my here's my strategy for you guys Handlebars all the way to the left, kickstand out, all the way down, and now push back a little bit just to confirm. Now you're good to get off the bike. Please do that because otherwise it could fall. All right, guys, 2022 Sportster S. Uh, we got a belt drive, well, so good on maintenance. If you guys can see how tiny this bike is, it's literally t smaller or shorter than the trunk of this BMW next to me. How crazy is that? Now, point of contention in the shop, the exhaust. I will say throughout this ride, it has been getting a little warm, especially up here in this region. Uh, nothing too bad though. If I'm gonna be honest guys, I love the way this bike looks. The only thing that kind of gets me is I wanna change out the bronze. I'm not a huge fan of the bronze. So we got bronze here, here, and on the engine a little bit. So whenever we get into customization mode, I am definitely gonna be looking into doing that. And another thing I'm just not sold on is the silver back here. I would like the exhaust like totally blacked out. And I have seen a couple of exhaust of this bike that don't, don't cover this area. And interestingly, the bike doesn't look complete when you have a hole that you can look straight through. Overall though, I, I like the way this bike looks. I like the look of these big wheels. I do kind of want a circular front headlight though. Like the little pill shape's not bad. But I think a circular headlight would look absolutely sick. Uh, these are all things that we're going we're gonna to be looking into because we do own this bike now. We are going to be able to do modifications to it. So your boy is super excited about that. But yeah, guys, uh, you guys let us know in the comments what you guys think about this thing. I'm going to grab my camera out. And I'm going to take some photos of it. If you guys are on Instagram uh, and want to see some photos that we take, uh, follow us over at c 2 Picks over on Instagram. I always post photos of the uh, the bikes we do first rides on, and we're posting these super stabilized uh, camera car shots. You guys have got to check them out. If you like the camera car shots, you really need to go check out Instagram. All right, guys, uh, that's it for the photos. Uh, you guys make sure to go check us out on Instagram and on TikTok. And now it's time to get my final thoughts on this thing and answer the question, does it live up to everything it was in California? <laughs> All right, it's time for everybody's favorite segment. I don't know if it's everybody's favorite segment. You guys have to let me know. The uh, handlebar lock test. Ugh. Nah, about a medium showing for the sports arrest. Not crazy good, not the best we've ever seen, but certainly not terrible, surprisingly, since it's uh, such a long cruiser. All right, guys. It's time to answer the question, am I still happy with it or am I uh, let down 
based on the experience I, I had before in California. Did this thing live up to everything I wanted it to be here on my home turf? <sighs> Big question. Uh, if I'm gonna be honest, guys, this bike met and or exceeded all my expectations that I set out and had in California. I gotta be honest, lately when we've been doing these first rides, you know the guys in the shop been getting me on more cruisers, and every cruiser that I've been riding, there was some stuff I liked and some stuff I didn't like, but I do feel like I'm getting better at understanding the attributes of most cruisers, and I'm, be I'm able to figure out what I like and don't like. Something you can ask every guy in the shop, something I would always come back from those cruiser first rides and say, this bike was good at this, bad at this, but if anything, it made me miss the Sportster S more. And part of me started thinking, is that literally just because when you rode the Sportster S, you know, you're out in California, you're getting to ride with all these uh, other people, other content creators, some Harley peeps, you know, did that experience, was it just like the, the ideal circumstance? You know, did I have a misunderstanding? Would I, was I able to ride this bike in the most perfect area, you know? And I started thinking that, honestly. I honestly was like, man, Harley did such a good job. They just got us out there, put us on this perfect road, and we all just love this bike, and that's why. But now that I've ridden it around where I'm at, where I ride all the bikes from, I can say 100% this bike fits the exact puzzle piece that I'm looking for in a cruiser. The Diavel's not bad, but I'm not a huge fan of the Diavel. I would, even with it being more powerful, more sporty, and more expensive, I would honestly pick this bike over that. I don't know why, you know, you would think I would just like the more performance-driven one, but there's some sort of combination that the Sportster S has going for it that I absolutely adore. I do think that Diavel looks better as just a, you know, as a visual thing. If you're asking me, if I, if I had the money for both, I'm picking the Sports to Rest. There is something about this thing that I just, I really like. And I'm happy because <laughs> it would have been really shitty if Harley was like, hey, you can have this motorcycle. And I was like, oh, well, I'm not as big of a fan of it. Uh, I'm I'm so thrilled with this thing. What I'm really uh, like super excited for is to have this bike for a long term and really start learning the engine, learning where that Rev Max 1250 likes to be ridden in. Because right now, this thing gives me the closest feeling to a Japanese sport bike. I feel like that's probably why I enjoy it so much. It's it's a cruiser, no doubt about it, but it gives me that fun riding characteristic that I, I fell in love with motorcycles about, you know? I fell in love with the Japanese inline fours, like the R6, that you can ride like a bat out of hell if you want to. And this is honestly the first cruiser that has really authentically tickled that side of uh of riding for me and and i feel like that's why i love it so much honestly but yeah guys i i, I could not be more impressed with this bike i am so over the moon that harley trusted the channel enough to literally give us one of these and i cannot wait to have this thing for a while mod it out and see what we can turn this thing into uh but guys that's about all i've got to say about this thing for now Obviously, we can make an unlimited amount of content with this, and we got a lot coming out for you. But for now, that's it. I'm Chase on Two Wheels. I appreciate you guys riding around with me. And uh, if you enjoy First Rides, there's a First Ride playlist down below. And guys, before I get out of here, I want to give a shout out to Harley, obviously, for uh, giving us this dang motorcycle. Uh, but also, got to give a shout out to Killer Creek in Roswell, Georgia. Uh, they're the guys, that, that's the Harley dealership that facilitated us picking this bike up. And before I went to Killer Creek, I had had a lot of negative experiences at Harley dealerships. I appreciate Killer Creek for literally being the first Harley dealership that I had a positive experience at. The guys just over there, the guys and gals over there, super awesome folks. Highly recommend that location. Uh, but anyways, guys, I'm Chase on Two Wheels. Thank you guys for running around with me. You guys go ride safe and we'll see you on the next one. Later. Uh, outro crew, thank you guys for getting to the end of the video. Make sure to put OC in your comments so we know you made it to the end of the video as well as hitting that like button. And uh, let us know in the comments, guys, what other videos should we make on our Harley Davidson Sportster S? If there's anything specific you guys are looking for, we got the bike, we got the time, we'll make it. Uh, let us know in the comments, put OC in it. 
So we know you made it to the end of the video. We love you guys a little bit longer, and we'll see you on the next one if I don't die. Yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Later.